43rd World Economic Forum kicks off and we begin our coverage with the big interview, a rare exclusive, like to say, with none other than Azim Fenji. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, you, Azam, was veteran this day. From, but let's just talk about the two years, 2012 to 2013. Uh, much, I would believe, has changed for India. In 2012, I think we were just negating people, saying our story is not over, uh, we're still very much there. 2013, I think the last four months, uh, has the damage been undone in India? Well, I think the intention is to try to undo some of the damage which has been done. Oh. Uh, so you've seen a spate of activities over the past two, two and a half months, which are in a positive direction. Oh. I think the key issue before us is execution, grassroots execution in terms of what needs to get done. Are you then here suggesting that some stuff has been done uh, to undo the damage, but a lot more needs to be done? Uh, there was an economic crisis that India was facing. Uh, do you think enough has been done to address that? I think I will say enough has been done to address that when you see the execution on the ground. Oh. One acid test is these large projects which have been held up because of absence of coordination on permission. And the whole objective of forming this ministerial committee headed by the Prime Minister is to get cracking on this and get it moving. When that gets moving, I'll say that the government is really functioning. It we has to happen quickly because it has a huge filtered out effect, positive effect. You perhaps have the, you know, you're perhaps touching the nerve of the issue. Many people believe uh, a lot of the state of reforms or economic decision making that has happened in the last four, four, five months uh, has perhaps boosted sentiment. Uh, do you think this will turn on the ground and boost growth? Because like you said, the big ticket projects have to move on. Unless they don't move on, uh, we are perhaps not going to see investment kickstart. And that is imperative to growth. But there is no question that the mood among the business leaders mm. is more positive today than it was three months back. There is no question on that. Mm. And I've met enough of them to be able to make a reasonably intelligent judgment on that. That's positive. If the large projects get moving, where a lot of money is held up, there will be positive plus. Uh, I think that's critical. But you will see more investments happening in India by Indian entrepreneurs than you have seen in the past 18 months. So far as the overseas investors are concerned, FII money is coming in, but that's hot money. I mean, that's it comes right. in and it goes. Yeah. Uh, so it has its own danger attached to it. So far as FDI funds have, uh, uh, which are, we are trying to invite FDI funds into the country, that pace has not picked up. I think everyone's in a watch and wait mode. But I think people are awaiting the outcome of the elections. What will take Indian businessmen to pump in the investments that they perhaps have held back because of the love that we saw in between? You say execution is one part, but what I else? think that, you know, most people have reached capacity. Yeah. So to keep up even incremental growth and not go in for mega growth, they will have to start investing now. I and they're getting enough confidence back that they will start investing. The only concern which is on the horizon is the outcome of the elections. I'm going to speak to you about the elections in just a bit, but uh, you are one of the people who, who urged the government to bite the bullet on reform. Uh, you did write letters to the Prime Minister. Are you a little disappointed that uh, as a country we uh, we took this bold decision only when we were pushed into the corner? You either take this decision or you downgrade it to the junk status. Uh, does that disappoint you a little? Oh, absolutely disappoint me. Yeah. We have lost three years of growth because of it. Absolutely lost three years of growth because of it. But now the government is getting some momentum. Let's support them on it. There's no point being unduly critical on that. But like we were talking about, you said everybody is awaiting the election outcome. Before the elections, I think the other thing that awaited people are awaiting around the world. And while we speak, uh, Finance Minister Chidambaram is in Hong Kong trying to tell the India story. Uh, are you also a little disappointed that some of these reforms have happened, A, because of course we were pushed into a corner, B, also because there was a change of regime in the finance ministry and there seems to be this strictness to uh, not block than there was, say, six, eight months back. Uh, would, you, would you agree with me when I assess that perhaps economic decision making was completely at hostage of policy? I think, I, policy? Think, I think the previous finance minister didn't have enough time for the finance ministry. Uh, he had just too many other directions. I think he was on 27 committees as chairman. How could it be humanly possible for him to focus on finance? That's exactly what happened. That set us back. Seriously. Uh, Chindambaran is very much in the saddle. He's much more aggressive, much more decision-making oriented. That coupled with the panic of the rating, he's kick-started the government, which in a way is good, no? 
So we, we reform when we are pushed into a corner, we reform only when there's a change in regime. But sir, India is also uh, at a very, we are facing an economic crisis of sorts. We are facing a twin deficit. Uh, our growth has crippled. Uh, inflation is still stubbornly high. The RBI is in little or no mood to relent on rates. Uh, I don't think the crisis part of our economy is over, or is it? And the, the, the more important government should realize that, that it requires sustained results on the ground mm. to get over the crisis. If we just sit back and say we've made this policy change, we've decided diesel prices are going to go up 50 paisa a month and the world is changed for us, that's not a fact. A lot of grassroots work has to be done. Will you agree with some of the global assessments being made that finally the government is listening and not just talking to uh, India Inc. or to global investors? Do you get a sense? I think the, the government is trying to cooperate more with the opposition. Mm. The, uh, major policy issues, I think they're reaching out more. Certainly the finance minister is reaching out more, which is a very positive trend you're seeing. Mm. Uh, they, should, they should expand on that. They should go into that. Because no government wants to inherit an economic mess, irrespective of whichever government which comes in. Yeah. No government wants to inherit a very high rate of unemployment of professionals. That's exactly what we're heading to. Right. We're not creating jobs anymore. And we're creating 10 million jobs a year with 8.5% growth. It's an interesting bit that you talk about because even in Hong Kong today when the finance minister was speaking, uh, he said something interesting. He said, uh, we are seeing a lot more of practical politics where people are coming together for economic decision making. Uh, while it is perhaps a utopian thing to say when you're traveling overseas and addressing your uh, global audience, uh, do, you, do you not believe that when elections are nearing and when we are looking at 2014, you mentioned it yourself, uh, we are perhaps going to see the standoff only worsen between the opposition and the treasury? Ventures, or are you hopeful that there will be a meeting of minds on most of these economic issues? See, the most controversial issue was FTI. And that's done. That's done. Yeah. Uh, I think the insurance bill will come up. I think some compromise will be reached on it, from what I understand. And that's good, it's because it will encourage money coming into insurance. Some other bills are not very controversial. Uh, so I think you'll see more progress in the parliament session in February than you've seen in the past. And it will be worthwhile for the government not to table something very, very controversial and get the whole parliament. What would you call controversial? I don't know what they have in their pipeline, which is very controversial. From the bill that I saw, mm. nothing is, is uh, something which is very controversial. And stall proceeding. And uh, you also have to give the new parliamentary affairs minister is working with the opposition well. That's right. Actually, a lot of people believe the last uh, parliamentary session was a lot of success uh, because of him. Because we mentioned the parliament session in February, of course, that's going to be the big budget. Uh, it, it seems to be the make or break budget uh, because I think the fine balance that the government has to strike is we are heading towards elections. They would want to bring in some big ticket populist measures, but we are also looking at rating agencies who, if your fiscal deficit expands, will downgrade you. They will not wait. They've threatened you twice uh, in the last three months alone. Uh, what, according to you, will then that fine balance be? No, I think the, the finance minister and the prime minister are determined to try to contain the fiscal def deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, they're making some progress towards it. My personal view is that a downgrade will not happen. Uh, there's enough intention on part of government to give the agencies more confidence. And you saw that in Moody's. That's right, yeah. Uh, and Moody's is also responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, I, th I think the government must be sustained in what they're doing. And they must implement on the ground. They must implement on the ground. So the key really is execution. Because we spoke about rating agencies, uh, a lot of people, naysayers in North Block, believe that they are perhaps uh, uh, very stern towards us. They're not as stern across uh, the rest of the world. Do you agree with that assessment? I don't agree with that assessment. They have to have absolute standards, otherwise they lose credibility. Mm -hmm. and in, but right now you do not believe rating agencies have a reason to downgrade India. At least they're intentionally speaking it up. That's a judgment I'm giving you. Know, for whatever that is worth. I'm not an economist. I'm not an expert you on this. You are one of the most respected voices in India. That doesn't matter. I don't make a decision for the rating agencies. You I wish think, I did that. You do think that right now they don't perhaps have ample reason to downgrade India? If you keep on this moment, they see the change happening. Uh, I have a question to ask you. And they have also raised the duty on gold by 2%. That, that they have. And they've taken a, lot of pool, a whole lot of other measures on should gold. Have, they should have done it more. Raise the duty more? Yes, but I think they're afraid that it will just give rise to more smuggling. A lot smuggling. of smuggling and black, uh, yes. Uh, but the question that one wants to ask you is the finance minister and the finance ministry seems to be 
in action mode at least. Uh, you know, gone are the last six months, first six months of 2012 when you saw nothing move on ground. Uh, approvals wouldn't come in, meetings would end in limbo, uh, nothing was happening. So from that point of view, perhaps we were talking about optimism, we were talking about confidence. But so still the story is about growth. Growth is not picking up. Uh, five and a half percent is what we are staring at, the lowest in a decade's time. The RBI has said inflation is still very high. We are stuck in this growth versus inflation scenario and nothing seems to be breaking ground on that. But that's what happens when you lose momentum. It cannot be recouped over. How much more time do we take before we get back? I think you'll get back six, six and a quarter percent growth next year, maybe six and a half if you're lucky. Yeah. The monsoon is good which is a far cry from the eight and a half we have averaged for many years. And please understand its implication on employment. Roughly every percentage of growth and generates and one million jobs, and every one million jobs generated as, as company jobs or permanent jobs generates between two and three surround jobs in terms of consumption power. Uh, while we were talking about the budget, there is a lot of buzz that uh, the finance minister could be looking at new taxes, inheritance taxes, one of the taxes he could be looking at. Uh, you know, some people suggesting in policy making that he should increase the tax slab. Uh, which side of the debate do you throw your voice you on? Know, whatever I say, it's going to hit headlines. It's not. So let's see, let's see, so you're supposed to make headlines on a major let's see, let's see, be quiet the major news. The doesn't go without giving a headline. I don't, I, so I don't know what's going to happen, frankly. You do not know what is going to happen. But I, don't want to, to, I don't want to voice an issue of philosophy. Yeah, there's merit in raising marginal tax rates for the very, very wealthy. So who so are the very, very wealthy? I suppose you define some cut-off limits now. Mm -hmm. And so far as inheritance tax is concerned, uh, I think there's enough dodges available all over the world where people have been able to dodge out of by creating very complex structures. What you will force very wealthy people in India is to create very complex structures mm. which will still protect them from inheritance taxes. And uh, it shouldn't give, to give rise to a spiral of negative sentiment. That's the least what we require today. Because in the short run, it will not pick up much money. Exactly. At least the inheritance tax won't, but raising taxes. You are perhaps one of the rarest voices of India if you've been speaking to who have said there's perhaps a little merit in tweaking tax rates, increasing the tax to the rich. Why, why this outcry each time raising taxes comes uh, to the debate, comes to the table? Uh, India Inc. gets up in arms. This is going to, uh, you know, vitiate yeah, sentiment. This is, this is very focused. I think the government wants to raise some resources. I don't think they'll get too much resources out of it, but they want to send some signals. Are those the right signals and the right time to send it? You know, I don't have strong views for it or strong views against it. In principle, how can you say that rich people shouldn't pay more taxes? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be fair in a country with this kind of poverty. And I think the rich people are bringing it upon themselves with their conspicuous consumptions. I mean, it is to a state of absurdity. Really to a state of absurdity. And not many people are actually as philanthropic as you are, and which is why uh, it's, it's perhaps for, uh, on the government's side. No, but don't, don't underestimate. Indian Indian rich people are doing philanthropy. They're doing it on a low-key basis. Uh, and you know, we have been quite involved with them. Vis -a -vis what you would like them what? to do a lot more, though. Yes, but uh, they, they are facing uh, limitations of knowing how to scale, in mm -hmm. which we are trying to give advice to a little core group which we have formed. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are uh, grouping, it, can they use other NGOs to uh, leverage what they are doing, who are the good ones. Their grouping is what is the right structure to have. They are grouping in terms of how much should they leave their family and how much should they give in philanthropy. Mm. Because that feeling that you have to leave actually everything to your family is very ingrained into Indian psyche. <laughs>
to come down to 75%. And when do we see that happen? It will have to happen before June, I suppose, no, unless they extend the time. And will you be going to the OSF shoot again? Well, if, if the 75% comes to the interpretation of SEBI, we don't need to. Then, but we also want a long-term diversification in the portfolio of our trust. Right. And we don't want an excessively heavy weightage of equity. I mean, traditionally responsibility. A question that I want to ask you is about your son, uh, Rishat. Uh, he completed... ask this question. Okay, I'm going to ask you too. Uh, he's completed five years in Vitro, uh, started in the uh, banking unit, went to in, uh, investor relations, uh, also is the chief strategic officer, MNA. As the chairman of the board, uh, how would you advise his performance? Well, he's got, he's got excellent ratings so far. Mm. And uh, his bosses have evaluated him. I have not evaluated him. I have nothing to say on it, mm. except review his appraisal like I do for every that person above a certain level. Mm. Uh, and I get quite involved in those mm. above a vice president level, particularly high-performing individuals. He's done exceptionally well with us. He's his ratings are top class. His ratings are top class. He's never used his position. Uh, so people think of it as any other Wipro team member, which I think is a very remarkable achievement. In an interview, if I remember clearly, you had said uh, it would make sense for Rishad to take over uh, the reins of Wipro at some stage. When do we see that I happen? I said that it would be, make sense for him to be responsible fiduciary for the ownership of Rishad because of his experience. Mm. I've never said that he would take over the reins of Wipro. The reins of Wipro are managed by a chief executive officer who is accountable to the board of directors. Oh, when and he is not in the line for a chief executive officer. Korean is very much the chief executive officer and doing very well. And like well. you said, you are happy with his performance. Absolutely. So when do we see Rishabh taking up a larger role? He, he has a very significant role. You say he's got good ratings, uh, he's doing well. I think you should ask his boss that, don't ask me that. You are, you are, you are a skip boss by all practical I'm purposes. I'm a skip boss. Skip boss is supposed to know everything else. When do you know, see him taking up a know, larger role? Uh, MLA is, is a major area and so is strategy. And he's involved in a lot of initiatives uh, working for Korean, like a lot of our future investments. You know, the, the uh, H, H1, H2, H3. H1 is the here and now. Right. H2 is forward. Right. H3 is even more forward. A lot of those investments he's very involved in because of his working with Korean, defining the parameters, evaluating those investments, and measuring those investments and are they giving results or do they need to be killed. Are we here to presume that for the next two years Rishabh is not going to succeed you? Most certainly not. Not? No. In three years from now you will be 70. You are remarkably fit. Three years and, from now. Okay, three years from now you will be 70. You are remarkably fit, good looking man to be 70, so a compliment there. Uh, I know Vipu doesn't have an internal deadline uh, for the board. Uh, have you set yourself a personal deadline of course? Frankly, I have not set myself a personal deadline. Neither have I set my personal deadline by Larry Ellison has done that he has to be carried out. <laughs> no. In a box perhaps. So I'm getting much more involved in our foundation because what can make a contribution there which is of a different magnitude. I, I, I would still want to ask you this question. Uh, how long do you see yourself doing, you're doing a remarkable job that you're doing? I'm not doing a remarkable job. You just criticize you me. Just said, you just but you know, like you said, uh, it takes a while. You get the, you've at least, you know, uh, got things moving, it will take us some time to turn around. But the fact is that at 70 I'm sure you'll have plans uh, to do different sort of things. You are very involved with your philanthropy. Uh, is that when at least... I'm getting, I'm getting much more involved with our philanthropy. I'm visiting, I'm visiting villages now. Mm -hmm. right? I'm going to step that up because that's where the action is. It's not in the head office in terms of what we're trying to do in fundamental primary education. So I'm going to get much more involved there, and, and uh, the organization is a healthy organization. So you know that's, which is that's, the the obvious, that's the obvious conclusion one draws. The moment you start getting involved there, this is where you wane your interest from. Are we like you? But you know, I, I don't need to take too much interest. Things mm -hmm. things are running on their own. Yeah, I'm involved in quarterly reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I contribute to that. I'm involved in our uh, strategic plans, which we do once a year. I'm involved mm -hmm. in our operating plan, which we do once a year. I'm involved in major acquisitions, like a board member. But my role will change more and more to chairman of the board. Uh, more and more. Right, right. To heading the board. Mm. And not doing the day-to-day... -day I'm not doing the day-to-day -day even right. now. But maybe I'm a little more hands-on involved now because I'm, I'm, I'm spending time with customers. Because, you know, I have a certain reputation and a certain ethos. Like, we have a huge number of customer meetings here. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm having TK present in all those meetings. So, for 
future, he could be getting those tickets. Is this fellow no, he's not here. He was not here he want him to? You know, we have a limited number of seats, right? so we have to prioritize people who give results, which is business. I don't know who's going to be happy. I'm thinking of your intervention to hear the opposite. Uh, two quick last questions. Uh, we, we've uh, seen problems that continue to still plague US and Europe. You did say things are beginning to change. Uh, decision making has gone down to the highest uh, level. Uh, but uh, just, just assessing the situation on the ground, is the best over for Indian IT? No, but you know, I don't think you see the hyper growth. Let's be the realistic. ones that we saw. The base is too large. Mm -hmm. The world is slowed down too much. And that's fundamentally, you know, you're not going to see a world of 6% growth coming back again for many, many years. That's right. Uh, there's too much uncertainty, there's too much volatility. But I think the industry is going up the scale. Mm -hmm. It's head on colliding now with the Accentures, the IBMs, in terms of what it is doing, what it can do, and what it will do. Mm -hmm. People are investing in consultancy, which is also adding a lot of value to the solutions you're able to offer to customers. Uh, so the industry will grow. It will certainly take market share from the world leaders, the international world leaders. Uh, but whether it will grow at 25%, no. Whether it can start growing at 15%, yes. Whether the leaders in the industry can grow faster, yes. Hmm. I have a question to ask you because you're also somebody who, who understands and has a view on the politics that uh, India sees. Uh, we are seeing a 2014 general election. Uh, we are seeing almost uh, a face-off between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi. Uh, I don't know whether it will be. Uh, we are no political pundits there, but uh, if it were to be, how do you think that changes the political landscape of the country? We have a young, um, you have, we have a young man who wants to engage with the youth who says India is changing. Uh, here we have another man who is the main opposition development poster boy. Uh, it's an interesting contest, it's nothing else. You know, frankly, I'm not very good at politics. I'm not trying to hedge your question. Hmm. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a face-off between Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi. Mm. Uh, I think you'll see a face-off in states, between state leaders and uh, key members of parliament who will be doing major campaigning. Mm. I think people like Rahul Gandhi will be selective in what campaign. He didn't participate in the Gujarat campaign, for instance. Mm. Uh, so, you know, the, the issue here is what is going to be the outcome of the elections. I don't think anyone knows. Everyone knows, including the finance minister, that no one party has come back to majority. So there's going to be a coalition. I think the key concern area is how fragmented will the coalition be and how much will it put in different directions. And if it's too fragmented, will it last? How long will it last? And what will be the next wave if the coalition does not succeed? A fragmented and there's a huge amount of uncertainty on this. A fragmented coalition is really bad for economic decision making because then every ally wants their pound of flesh. Uh, when you say it may not be a face-off, this is our last question, may not be a face-off between Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi, uh, are you here suggesting that they may not both be touted as poster boys for the Prime Minister's job? I don't know about Narendra Modi. You've got to really ask the leadership of the BJP party. Mm. And you mean they know it. <laughs> they don't seem to know it. They don't seem to know it. And even if they do, they want but to I don't think Rahul Gandhi has expressed too much interest in being a Prime Minister. I think a lot of people have jumped the gun just because he's been named the Vice President. Uh, but you know, he was playing that role in a way, anyway. He was always number two. Yes, he was always number two. He had the powers of a number two and he had the uh, Indian following mm. of the number two, at least of the politicians. I don't think that's changed many. It's given him a legitimacy of a role. Usually he always comes down to the sun, which is why I go back to the chef. Will it usually like... We are not a dynasty. You're not a dynasty. That's, yeah, that's the fundamental difference. But you're one of the largest shareholders in the company. That still doesn't make us a dynasty. Thanks very much for talking to us, sir. It's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. It's back to you in the studios. We've just had a rare exclusive chat with Mr. Azim Fenty, one of the tallest leaders of India. He's present at Davos talking about the growth story, saying things have certainly changed on the ground. And of course, he's going to hard sell that story to many of the business and the government leaders he meets from across the globe here. Thank you.